Welcome back, welcome back to the channel. It's your boy, Schoolboy here, here with another video. This time, we're going to be talking about Real Housewives of Potomac, Season 8, Episode 5, Pie in the Austin Sky. But before we go ahead and get into another boring episode of Real Housewives of Potomac, let's just get some good old housekeeping out of the way, okay? Um, if you missed last week's two-part episode of hotline bling uh chat room make sure y'all get into that um we are actually three episodes in we are about to film episode four this week so make sure y'all binge watch and catch up um again the episodes always premiere every friday night um at 10 15 eastern 9 15 central standard time and this is on chef don don's channel it is executive produced by me and chef don don um, it's, he's doing some amazing job with the editing over there. Please go and check it out. Please support this black man. Um, support him, his production company, and everything that's coming out uh, that he's doing. I am amazed with the edits on the show. It's nothing like you have ever seen on any other anyone else's YouTube platform. So y'all make sure y'all go over there and support um, that episode. This week we will be fi filming the Christmas episode, um, so make sure y'all look out for that coming this Friday. As well, make sure you're looking out for School of Love, uh, which is the new dating web reality series uh, for the LGBTQIA plus community. And it stars me, <laughs> your boy, schoolboy. I will be out here um, finding love. Um, and I want to stay positive about it. And hopefully I do find love with the right woman. Been single for about three years now. Well, actually almost four. Yeah, for at least four. And now I'm ready to go ahead and put my hat in the ring and, you know, find some love and, you know, settle down, do all that good thing. Um, we do want to also let you know School of Love casting is extended. Um, and it is extended due to um, us just want to give you a good product. That's number one. Number two, uh, we want to make sure everybody enjoyed the holidays first. And then, you know, we give you all something fresh and new at the beginning of the year. And as well. You know, they got to do their whole thing with production and making sure that we have places that we can film at and do our thing and be able to give y'all good content. So, ladies, if you're looking for love and companionship but don't know where to start, are you fed up with the challenges of dating and drama in today's dating scene? You know, apply for the web series. The requirements, you do have to be within the age of 30 to 45. Preferably, we would like for you to live in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, but if you do not and you... Re you do travel in outside of the DFW area for the show. You are responsible for your travel and room and board. I can't stress that enough, okay? We ain't Bravo, and we ain't got that kind of money to be paying for all of that, but you would have to make sure you have your accommodations. You cannot be in any type of entanglement, no marriages. Uh, I need you to be single, and I don't need nobody in my comment section coming after me acting crazy because – they think you and them is hunching and y'all is together in some type of relationship that y'all ain't in. Okay. <clears throat> also, you want to be make sure you're active on social media, which is X, IG, Facebook, or LinkedIn. You're um, and you're going to be available to film at the production date. Go ahead, and make sure y'all apply um, at www.tcddproductions.com. Again, it's www.tcddproductions dot com make sure that you get out there and you go ahead and hit there also available there is also the crowdfunding where you guys can crowdfund and you can donate to the production of school of love and to hotline bling chat room okay uh that helps um buy cameras and equipment and everything like that uh don just shared the other day that one of the cameras that he's gonna need to film and use is gonna be at least twenty two twenty two hundred dollars so he's this man is putting his hard earned dollars and time and energy to building his production company. And if y'all would like to donate to that and would love to donate, make sure y'all go to the website, www.tcddproductions.com. And y'all go to the crowdfunding link and y'all donate. OK, I don't care if it's five dollars, a dollar, whatever your heart desires, please help donate. It does help bring y'all quality product to the channel. Also, School of Love was also going to be premiering to Chef Don Don's channel, so make sure y'all subscribe to his channel, watch his videos, like the videos, and 
hit your notification bell button over there so you make sure you get the know-how of when every all these different things drop, when new episodes of Hotline Bling come out, and also when School of Love is set to go ahead and premiere. So y'all make sure y'all do those things for me. And as well, if you have a Black-owned business and you would like that Black-owned business, featured on School of Love or Hotline Bling chat room, please email us at admin at tcddproductions.com. Again, the number is, the, not number, the email is admin at tcddproductions.com. Um, so you could be a YouTuber. You could be a, you know, you could sell insurance. You, you could sell homes. You could do whatever. If it's a Black-owned business and you want it shown on either show, as a commercial, make sure your commercial is already created and clipped, though. We're not doing that part portion. So y'all got to make sure that everything is created, clipped, put together, and everything. Just um, they will get, once you email them, they will get you back out all the promotional packages that will come about uh, with that. I do apologize. There are blowing leaves behind me. So if y'all hear that, it is them blowing leaves. Um <laughs> so if y'all go ahead and make sure that y'all have all of that information. Okay. So make sure y'all check out all of the information above. Again, if you have a black owned business and you would like that to be featured, make sure you email us at the email right there on the screen. All right. Now, of course, at the bottom of the screen scrolling is my social medias. And if you would like to donate to the channel uh, via Cash App or Venmo, that is also scrolling at the bottom of the screen. But let's just go ahead and get into the things that the things are, which is last night's episode of Real Housewives of Potomac. Um, I told y'all the reason why I wasn't going to start, you know, after a while, if this wasn't giving enough, I was going to start giving y'all pre-records. I was not going to be doing live videos on it because it's it's it's, it's not giving. And Potomac, I don't know, it, it's in a rut. The sad part about it is Potomac is doing this at season eight, and they're not have not even been on TV as long as Real Housewives of Atlanta, which has been on sixteen seasons almost now. It's going into a sixteen season, and this is doing this in season eight. Um. And I don't know what's going to exactly change about it. I don't know if Potomac is going to change, but we need some progression with the storylines and we need some progression that's going on with the ladies. If they're not going to be able to have fun shade, like still coexist and deal with each other to give us something outside of everything being triggering and everything being negative. I don't know how anybody's going to stay reviewing the show. I'm seeing a lot of content creators saying that, hey, they're backing up off the show completely. They can't do it. And I respectfully understand why, because it's, 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 it's going dark. It's past the levels of messing with folks, families It's past. It is at the point where folks need to start suing folks on the cast. And because it's gone to a whole new level of, of, of foolery um, on it. And I really don't understand. So again, this is Real Housewives of Potomac season eight, episode five, High in the Austin Sky. This episode opens up with Ashley, Mia, and Giselle. They meet up to go get clothes for this trip to Austin, Texas. And this store has like all of this little house on the prairie ass clothing. And I am just so sick of people filming in Texas. And this is what y'all think that every time a reality TV show needs to come to Texas, that this is what it is. That we run around here with cowboy boots and shit on and this little house on the prairie ass clothing. And that is what Texas is all about. And it's not. Texas is about a lot more than just that. Um, hell, especially in Dallas, we got a Universal Studios about to be built here. We have uh, multiple sports teams in Texas. You have um, a lot of historical history in Texas as well. You also have a lot of events that constantly go on. It's just like, it's really trash, it's lazy, and I'm so tired of every Housewives franchise, even including these shows that are not Housewives franchises, they do this shit, and they think Texas is, this is, that's all Texas with. We ain't got no damn tubble weeds rolling down the street. We actually had, it's a city. Like, can we stop with this mammy-made little house on the prairie bullshit that y'all keep saying? It's Texas, because it's not. So 
they asked where uh, they will be staying and is it going to be a hotel? And they said, and Ashley said, yes. They bring up will there be drinking games and they said they like it when Karen drinks and Ashley makes a comment. She's on her gin and juice lately and Giselle says she's on her crack and juice. And again, you know, Giselle, you always want to talk about somebody else and making like wild and you call this as being shady, but then also it's just like, ma'am, do you have to include drug use? Like, did, did, did it have to go there? Like, I just, like, Giselle irritates me and she makes my ass itch because she does things like this and then yet she doesn't want anybody to say anything derogatory or negative about her. So why do you do stupid shit like this? I really don't understand. Mia says she's just been talking a lot late, lately, and Giselle doesn't believe that Naneka is lying about Wendy's mom, praying against her family, and I'm like, because you don't like Wendy, you're going to believe anything, so at this point, Giselle, anything that you say with your uh, gizzard neck, I'm just not giving it energy, because Giselle, this is just what you do constantly. Ashley claims she didn't completely dismiss Naneka's claims about Wendy, because she told her with so much conviction. And, and Ashley, you're, you and your football head, you and your forehead, you and your big head are stupid. Just because I sit here and tell you something with passion doesn't mean that I'm not lying. That sounds dumb as hell. And I guess it was, was because was Michael telling you something shit with passion when he was cheating on your ass and, and then you totally believed him? Because he, cause he said it with so much conviction and passion. Like, you sound stupid, Ashley, when you say that. And I hope you realize how dumb you sound. Mia says it's just a whole lot of this sister-in-law and everyone calling this one and that one. And I had to agree with Mia. It's a lot of long telephone cord going back and forth. Nobody really knows. And I, honestly, at this point, bringing the damn cousin, uh, in law Levy and Ivy to explain this because at this point it's a, just a constant game of telephone that is not ending in it and it's really stupid at this point. I'm just gonna honestly say that. They move over to um Eddie and Wendy, they're having lunch, they order lunch, and Wendy is like, uh, Naneka and I have met two times, and anytime she's in the group, she wants to attack me. Eddie says all he knows is. He was talking to G and then furniture started moving. He don't really even understand what's, what is the hubbub with everything. And they swing back over to Mia, Ashley, and Giselle talking. And Giselle claims Jamal told her not to play with things like that. And a demonic spirit is a real thing. And she believes uh, it's true to it. And it's like, Giselle, you hunched on his demonic spirit ass for how many years? And, and girl, by taking advice from a man who is um, selling uh, medicinal Mary Jane on church property in Georgia is really just an opening a dispensary is crazy. Like I, there's nothing Jamal Bryant could tell me about anything. I'm just going to say that Giselle consider your source. Hell you laid with him. I mean, man, please. Um, Mia says Naneka is smart. She's a lawyer. And I'm like, just because you're a lawyer doesn't mean necessarily you're smart because there's a lot of lawyers that I question how the hell did you pass the bar exam and your common sense level is that just because you were book smart doesn't mean you're common sense smart. And I don't feel like Naneka is common sense smart, but whatever. Any, anybody smarter than Mia at this point, we've already established that, ma'am, you probably lick windows on the short months. We, we, we know that. Mia says, um, so, so Giselle says, uh, will she, uh, uh, Giselle says she is smart and she's a lawyer and she's not going to make up stuff. So I believe her hundred percent girl lawyers lie every day. That's a part of their job. Even when they know their client did it, they have to defend them <laughs> from going to jail. So even if they know that their client is lying, they still have to defend them as if they are not lying. So they do that for a living. Lying, they do that for a living. And just because she came busting up on the scene, and again, somebody that y'all don't like because y'all don't like Wendy, 
This is why y'all are just, oh, gung-ho, she's telling the truth. Who's to say that she's not lying? We still have not heard from the two people that the actual issue is really between, which is Lebe and Ivy. That's the two people that the issue is really in. I don't even know how Neneka and, and Wendy even play into this at this point, and I really don't give a damn because it, it, it's got to a point where it's just crazy. They bring up Ike trying to square up with Eddie about him unfollowing him. And I'm going to tell you just right now, even if they did know each other, and I'm going to, here's, here's where I'm going to go with the logic. I look at it like this. Ivy is Wendy's sister. She's going to ride for her sister right, wrong, or indifferent. That's how I see it. If Ivy came to Wendy and said XYZ is going on, if she got access to her husband's social media, she could, Wendy could have easily unfollowed Ike, period. Let's just keep it a buck. She could have done it due to the mess surrounding that situation and going back and forth, and she's going to ride with family regardless. At the end of the day, Eddie probably don't pay attention to that shit because some men don't give a damn about social media like that. He is not Cecilia, a.k.a. Cecil, over there on Married to Medicine where you steady wanting to be all up in women's business. That's a grown earth man. He is over there worried about what he got going on with the happy Eddie and all of that and his business ventures and him being a lawyer. So why would he even want to get in the dirt with this? I, so just for me, it's just like a whole lot of... There could be some other caveats to it, but... Hell, I ain't inspect the gadget, and I don't know, and, you know, it is what it is. They go back to Eddie and Wendy uh, talking, and he says they went to College Park together. They all went at different times to College Park, so that means we started at different times. We all graduated at different times based upon our profession. The producers asked Wendy, does Eddie know Ike, and were they ever friends? And she says, I mean, as colleagues, it's a lot of people. I don't remember who who... I don't remember when, uh, who, who I went to college with. So, you know, kind of like brushing it off. But again, I still think that when do you know something that happened with that damn Facebook page and you just ain't going to say it. And that's cool too. Whatever. Cause I, I at this point, I don't even care. Um, Eddie asked, how is it going to be on a trip to Austin? And Wendy just feels like her and the NECA shouldn't even be fighting since they are both Igbo. It's like, why should we both be two Nigerian women arguing with one another? Which I get it. But then at the same time, again, we don't necessarily know what's really going on with this. And really, it's just stupid. It's a matter of, I don't know you. You say you know me. Da, da, da. Again, it's a repeat of Real Housewives of Atlanta, Courtney, and Candy. Stop giving it energy, Wendy, and it wouldn't be all of this. And, I, and, and I'm going to keep saying that. Wendy is getting on my nerves because you're giving it energy. And so is the neck. Y'all are both getting on my damn nerves because you're both giving it energy and it's really not even that serious. One minute y'all say y'all seen each other in passing. Y'all don't really know each other. Now it's all of that. Hey, Lebby and, and uh, Ivy were friends. They've been on and off. This is what they do. Now, it, it just I, I'm sick of it. I don't give a damn who don't like each other. Just shut up now. Get to know each other now in the present moment so that we can move forward. But we're never going to be able to move forward on this cast as long as they keep arguing over the petty shit. That is the reason why the, so, the show is so damn aggravating because they stay on shit like a dog with a bone. They don't let it go. You got to let it go in order for stuff to progress and so that the audience is actually entertained. This is why people keep saying that it's too triggering and it's irritating and, it, and we're, they're having these issues with it because of it's not, there's no resolve to shit. We can't move on. Because we got to keep acting like kids. It's just stupid at this point. I'm sorry. I had to get that rant out. Because it's just really pissing me off. They go back over to Giselle, Mia, and Ashley. And Giselle says, Wendy knows that her what her mother is doing. And I'm like, girl, who the hell is sitting around here looking at stalking at what their parent is doing all day? I know I don't. I don't know what the hell either one of my parents is doing all day. And I don't bother them. They don't bother me. Because, baby, whatever you doing... As long as it ain't doing nothing destructive to uh, mess up your life or mess up mine, we good. I'm not stalking my parent all day. 
Giselle sounds really ignorant when she says that. Wendy, uh, Eddie, she claims Eddie knows what he's doing as well. And I'm like, girl, you and these fake ass conspiracy theories and plots that are not there. The only uh, people on this damn show plotting is you, uh, Robin, and Ashley. You idiots. You idiots are the only ones sitting up here plotting to avoid really being honest about what the fuck is going on in your real lives. Y you three. Okay? You three. And it's been like that since inception of this damn show. Stop. And she claims that they're working together for evil. No, that would be, again, you, Ashley, and Robin. And you might as well go ahead and throw Mia in there because she so badly wants to be up y'all's behinds so damn bad. So you can go ahead and add her into the mix too. So you might as well say anybody that's on the opposite end of Wendy, Karen, and Candace are plotting against. It's a clear division in the cast, and that's another reason why this cast can't move forward is because the division is so blatant, it's disgusting. We roll on down the road to Naneka and Ike, and they're at the OBGYN office, and she says people are ready for her to have a baby within one year of her marriage. They really just wanted to travel and do this and do that. And again, I would be still traveling through our line and hunching in whatever cities I wanted to hunch in and whatever countries I would have hunch in, because you ain't going to make me rush me to have no child. This sounds absolutely stupid, unless you are already at the age where your biological clock is ticking, tick, 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 and that's why they're pushing you to do this, okay? She claims she wasn't ready to do all that one year into marriage, and Aneka is 35. You a hard-ass 35, and I don't believe you 35, and later on in the show, you actually tell on yourself. So, again, you lying. This is why it's hard for me to even believe that what you're saying about Wendy's sister and your cousin-in-law and this whole damn mess that y'all got going on. Do you know me? I know you. You don't know me. I don't know you. You don't know me. I don't know you. You know me. But I don't know you. You don't know. It's a bunch of bullshit. Somebody is lying. And you clearly said that you was, you, we caught you in the episode where you was lying. The necklace is 35. She says it's hard for her to conceive, and maybe her family was right about her having kids quickly. Uh, whatever, girl. Ike says yesterday was a lot, and the necklace claims that she wished she would have talked to Wendy privately about it, but you didn't, lady. You wanted a moment on camera, and this is what you did. And I'm no shade, and I'm going to believe this, and I, this is something that I believe in my soul. I believe whatever happened between Levy and... um. Ivy, I think Levy put the battery in your back to attack Wendy with whatever mess happened between her and Ivy. And she wanted you to bring it to the screen. And she probably said, oh, well, this would be a good storyline for you to go ahead and use for your season um, in with your introduction. Go ahead and attack Wendy. Mm -hmm. That's because pre-production, you, you came in with an agenda and you came in with something that you already had set up. And I really do believe you the battery is put in your back by your cousin to do her dirty work to get back at levy she couldn't get back directly at levy so she's using you to attack wendy in order to get back i i see it it's it is it, it, this it's a mess and i peeped it and i clocked it i'm not dumb she claims the uh shrine thing is serious in nigeria and people do it for destruction and um unaliving of people and she doesn't get why wendy is being fake with her and it's like y'all have both said one minute you say that you've only seen her in passing and she says the same thing and then you back pedal and pussy pop and then you say no that y'all actually know each other again no one knows what is really going on because it keeps all of this back and forth, 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 back and forth. Damn, can we pick a struggle here? Can we pick one and kill a lane and stay in it? Because the story keeps changing. It's been changing, okay? 
The doctor comes in and says they only have been. The doctor comes in and he says, well, y'all only been trying seven months and gives it more. And he says, look, give it some more time. But she wants a solution now. And it's like, sweetie, do you want IVF? Like, if that's what you want, you should have went to a fertility doctor. Then they would check his swimmers, your eggs, and figure out what the problem is if it's that serious. But if you have only been trying seven months, then you haven't really given it a ditch effort to really say that you can't get pregnant. And I will tell you this, man. How about you stop taking champagne with the prenatal pills and you might be able to get pregnant. Just saying. Just saying. I ain't a clinical doctor, but I'm just saying. Um... Once the doctor walks out, Ike gets up and dances and she gets irritated and starts snapping at him. And I just can tell, like, girl, you, I couldn't be married to you because you, I clearly I'd have been, we would have had rounds. That's all I'm going to say. We scroll on down the road to Jordan, uh, Gordon and Mia. They're at this therapy session for their marriage. And the therapist asks what brings them in. I'm going to tell you what brought him in. Finances. He broke. He ain't got no money. He's no longer the sugar daddy. She's a sugar baby. He's no longer a sugar daddy. And um, she going to fake the funk with this therapy session and they working on a marriage for a storyline to then parlay to next season. We'll see her new, um, her next victim. Um, excuse me, not victim. Uh, <laughs> next financier of her lifestyle. And that's exactly what it is. They playing in front of our face too. Um, I don't think necessarily Gordon's playing, but she's definitely playing. But then again, I look at Gordon's side eye too because I'm like, dog, you got her up out the strip club. You left your first wife for her. You left probably the 80 for the 20, and this is what you got. And now you want to sit up here and complain, sir? If you don't get up out of my face, please go somewhere expeditiously and sit your ass down because you knew exactly what you signed up for. She claims the downsizing and him being voted out of the business. And being fired has changed everything. Correct. The finances. Number one reason why a lot of people get divorced. Money. Mia says she was going to get a divorce attorney and file for divorce claim. Gordon claimed he didn't know uh, it got that bad and he wants to figure it out. Nigga, you know it got bad when your money dried up. You know. You know. I'm going to play dumb in front of this therapist. You know what time it is. She claims she wanted Gordon to retire. His work was taken over. They both were working. She wants him to be able to be a good father. And I'm like, Mia, stop this retirement bullshit. You wanted him to catch and make as much money off of that family business as he could and then retire. And then what businesses that y'all could take from that family business and parlay into your own personal businesses. You wanted him to put that shit in your name so that you could continue to work, but him be retired. I'm not dumb. I, I just kind of, I know where you're trying to go with this, but it didn't work out that way because the family got suspicious in some way of you and him. And whatever way that they got suspicious, they got suspicious. Okay. And that's why y'all both booted the hell out the business. Mia claims they sold a business and then the lawyer that they did the paperwork stole from them and never paid them. And then un unalived himself. Mia cries at the therapy session, and I just see it as the money ran out, and now she's running out. That's that's pretty much what it is, okay? In the words of Justin Timberlake, cry me a river, oh, cry me a river. You about to go find another, you know, chase another waterfall and uh, uh, go on down to, to new lakes and rivers that got some more money. Other than that, Gordon is done for you because... You don't care about Gordon. It's a wrap. Like Reynolds. We scroll on down and we see Robin packing up and talking to her mom about the Austin trip. And then they show Ashley talking to the nanny about um, them little old men that she's raising and uh, scheduling, working with Michael's schedule and all of that. We didn't need to know that. And we didn't need to give a damn about uh, Gollum's schedule with his kids. Then we see Giselle asking her oldest daughter, can she watch her sister's? She 18. She should be capable. Anyways, now we go straight on down. We get, they get to Texas. Ashley divides everyone up by astrological signs in the call. And I'm just like, Ashley, you're such a ditzy, bird brain ass, dense, big headed heifer. 
Candace and Robin are in the same black truck and they're both uncomfortable. They move over to Giselle and Karen. They're having a conversation in the truck and actually brings up her turning to triple 20. And Karen says she's happy about it. She says she doesn't sweat the small stuff anymore. And Giselle is like, you were the other day. And I'm like, Karen says, I was speaking my mind. Giselle asked her, does she like Robin? <laughs> Karen was like, yeah, I want to see her win. I was like, you do, you do, Karen. Karen, you in your mold want to see Robin win. Are you sure about that? Because I'm not even sure that you are sure about that. I'm just, I'm just saying. Um, Giselle says, why don't you tell her that? And Karen says, no. I'm like, damn, Karen, you ain't gonna tell me that. That's how you know Karen. <laughs> Karen don't see it for Robin in no way, shape, or form. Karen says it's like a, 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 a pie cut in half. She has the other half in the freezer and the other half is out. But she'll address Robin when she's ready about things. And I'm like, you gonna just keep asking her about what the situation really is between her and Juan. Robin is still going to keep avoiding the conversation and protecting Juan at all costs. So, I mean, what is the purpose of the conversation, honestly, Karen? I mean, at this at this point, you dragging it out, too, and I don't even know what for, because I'm just like, girl, no one cares about this stupid beef that you have with Robin. Actually, we are sick of all of the, the same manufactured beefs that have been on this show since day one. It's kind of like we we on the Steph Curry putting it putting us to sleep at this point. Um, and one, you know, and one thing Karen says is she knows that Robin it will um, ride for Juan all day and all night and even on Sunday. And it's like, okay, well then Karen, let it go if you already know all that. Karen says Robin is, is just really want to be friends with her. <laughs> just really supposed to be friends with her and. She says, look at her and Giselle. They've gone through everything that they've gone through and they still play nice with each other and they keep on going. And it's just like, you and Giselle have learned how to manage each other and play nice with each other when y'all need to. But you and, you, and, you and Giselle still get into it and you and Giselle still go back and forth. It's just you and Giselle have learned to manage to deal with each other and y'all just play nice just enough, okay? They get to the hotel, which is... uh. The hotel is nice down in Austin. The, the only part about it that I hated is that it was actually picked a hotel near a whole freaking construction site. So it really kind of takes the beauty away from the hotel. But I mean, I digress. It's better than most of the hotels and most of the trips that they have been on. So I'm not going to complain too bad. Um, they walk into the suite with the food and the liquor and everything is right there. You know, I actually was impressed with the hotel rooms. Again, this is light years above any other damn trip they have done on this show. Uh, Karen asked, are all the rooms going to look like this? And she was like, um, they're nice. And Karen was like, that's a no. So Ashley says that Robin is in the penthouse suite. And that's because she's been going through a lot lately. So she deserves that. And so Robin, you know, she was happy about that. And I'm just like, girl, whatever. Okay, because you probably can't afford a penthouse suite if somebody ain't paying for it anyway. So, whatever. Um, Asha claims she got that room because she's under a lot of stress, and Mia says, "Is, is that's why that's why she gets a better room?" And I'm like, Mia, you just want to say your your finances is more stressful than uh Robin's uh cheating that she got with her man. But I mean. I mean, it is what it is. I, to me, y'all both signed up for what you got, and that's just, it is what it is. Um, and I just think, suck it up, buttercup. We all done went through some things in life. It'll be okay, okay? Karen gets to explaining this pie thing with Robin and Giselle, and Giselle calls it a stupid-ass pie thing. And um, Giselle, you're a stupid-ass. I just want to say that. Um... And she says it's not stupid. Now Karen is explaining half of the pie with Robin is a freezer. Is it that's in the freezer is in two pieces? And I'm sorry. Now again, I do have to start agreeing with Giselle. Like it is stupid as hell because I'm just like, girl, just say you don't see it for Robin. Just uh uh uh, uh Karen, and stop all of these damn copalisms and and, and uh, 
metaphors and bullshit. Just say you in your mold don't like Robin, and everybody will be okay with that. I think we, we can all move on from that. Wendy says, I thought y'all squashed it, and Karen says it's not over. Robin says Karen can take her one quarter of a pie and shove it up her ass. And I'm like, well, you already up Juan's prostate, so you can't get no further. Um, and then you might want to take that same pie that you're telling Karen to shove up her ass. You might want to shove it up your ass, so maybe Juan will, might eat your ass or even pay attention to your ass. That might even work there for that, too. But, hey, I digress. The ladies go to their rooms and they come back down to the hotel pool. First, uh, first to show up is Wendy, Karen, and Candace. And Candace says the view sucks because of construction. And Wendy seconds that. And Karen says she didn't even open the window. She wanted to at least give it a good rating. <laughs> like, that's cold. Candace asks, Well, how are you and Aneka? And Wendy says, I don't have anything against her. I don't have any vested relationship with her. And I'm just like, Really, neither one of y'all should have anything against each other because neither one of y'all have a vested relationship with either, either one of y'all. So really, it's stupid on all fronts for both of y'all, to me. Ashley comes down and sits down, and then she, the waitress comes over and asks what they want to drink, and they say tequila. Then Giselle and Aneka come in, and they sit down and ask if food was ordered. And Karen says, oh, we just ordered drinks. Karen asks, how are they going to move on collectively as a group? She can't ignore Candace and Giselle's issues again. I know that they're trying to use Karen as the peacemaker for this, but I think Karen and I think Giselle and Candace are way past a point of any type of reconciliation. And I'm, I'm, I'm gonna just be honest. Um, Giselle says for her kids' sake, safety, and mental health, she doesn't speak to Candace, and Candace says. It was my husband and my bonus children and my husband and family's reputation that was attacked. I should be the one who feels like that way about her. And again, I have to side with Candace. Giselle, you said some shit and you you made it seem like this man was trying to SAU, grape you, and anything else to you because y'all stepped into a room together to talk about his wife and your him and his, your wife, his wife and your relationship. It was not none of that type of situation. And you caused that man irreparable damage and defamation of character. Candace and, and Chris should have been sued your punk ass for that. If it was me, I would have put them people in your life. I would have went down and I would have filed a lawsuit against your ass faster than you could blink them green eyes that's in your, your head. I would have been put them people in your life. Lying on me and playing with my character like that for a damn TV show. But again, you don't want nobody to say nothing about you at all, Giselle. Or talk about your kids or talk about Pastor Holy Whore or talk about anything connected to you. But you have the audacity to get on this show and play with people's marriages, play with people's lives, sit around, plot bullshit, and then expect to sit back and throw the rock, hide your hand, and act like you ain't did shit. And then act like a total fucking Karen the entire time. Please. Please. Please, Giselle. Go to hell swiftly. And I mean that. Now, Giselle saying Chris made her go into... Now, Giselle is up here in a confessional saying that Chris made her go into a bedroom and close the door, and that made her uncomfortable. Again, you're adding lies on top of the lies. And again, if I was Chris and Candace, I would be down to the courthouse suing you for that funeral parlor slash Lego DIY project ass house that you got down there in Bethesda. I would own whatever you had. You raggedy heifer. But you too busy around there playing around with that young piece of trade around there and trying to say that you in a relationship with him. Girl, bye. Giselle says Candace said hurtful things and she can't come back for she can't come back from. And I'm like, Giselle, like you ain't said hurtful shit to people. Like you don't say hurtful things. Like you don't say things that are terrible about people. So we're really gonna do this. Like Giselle, you are so 
fucking unemotionally intelligent is ridiculous. You want people to be so considerate of your feelings, but fuck everybody else's feelings and their families and what you do to them and how you treat them. It's all about you, 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 you. See, that's that Karen shit up inside of you. And I don't give a damn what I stand with Candace when she called you a Karen, because that's exactly what you and Robin do. You collectively do it together. Your um, brain and Robin is pinky, from pinky and the brain. Two idiots together. You're still trying to take over the world and can't. Giselle says, Karen, she said, Giselle says she and Karen are in a good space. And Karen says, why can't there be hope for others? And again, the reason why there can't be hope for others on this cast, Karen, is because y'all are not going to willing to let it go. The cast is too divided at this point. And until people actually really let the shit go so that y'all can actually move forward, we're not going to see nothing but the same rinse and repeat bullshit that y'all have been giving us so far. And it's been going further and further down the hill since season five. And now we're on eight. And we still further rolling down into the black hole. It is not getting any better. So they move over to Mia and Robin talking. And Mia tells Robin about the lawyer that stole money from them and then unalived himself. Robin is shocked. And, of course, they talk about her financial issues in the past with her and Juan and losing his retirement money with that bad, terrible investment that she had. And that man unalived in himself. So they couldn't get their investment back. Mia is crying and everything. And Robin comforts her. And it's just like, okay, I don't like either one of you have so whatever. So we get to the final scene of the episode. We go back to the pool area. And Karen says, Giselle was quiet at Pickleball. And she says, with the allegations going on, she was quiet. And I'm like, girl, that's the only time you're quiet. Because any other time you're up in everybody else's business acting like you know everything when you don't. Candace says that is some strong allegations to say about someone and to believe without coming to Wendy directly. And again, I agree with Candace because I'm like, you're saying a lot of this stuff, but you never went to, you never went to Wendy directly to talk to her. You spread this around the group, but you never went to the, to the source of the problem. You never addressed it. Neneka says she does believe them. And in all of her 40 years of life, now, you just said you was 35 at the doctor. Now you're saying you're 40. What is your age? I think you is about a strong 45. Okay? I don't even think you're 40. I think you're a strong 45. She says, with well, all the years of her life, she's never had someone threaten her with a shrine. And I'm like, girl, I don't believe this lady is doing no hoodoo, voodoo, trudo, brudo, whatever, root work. Nothing. I don't believe this lady is doing that. I think she said a prayer. She used the the, uh, the Holy Ghost, the mighty name of Jesus, and she put that prayer out there. And that's it. And if you've been to old school Kojic, Pentecostal, uh, Baptist, any of them type of churches, you know how black families, how that goes in black churches. Get the hell out of my face. And Giselle, you of all people, that's supposed to have been an alleged first lady. I'm going to say alleged because ain't shit um, holy about your ass and neither nothing is holy about Pastor Holy Whore either. Oh, you should know better than that. But again, because you don't like Wendy, you're going to go jump on the I hate Wendy band wagon, okay? Giselle says, well, you said, uh, your mom said stuff about Mia. And Wendy said, well, she didn't say that type of stuff about Mia. And, you know, Wendy reads off that stuff. And I mean, to be honest, what that lady said in that comment section wasn't no damn, uh, uh, wasn't no voodoo hoodoo or nothing like that. That that again, that was the freaking reach. Okay. And Robin and Mia walk into the scene at this point. And Giselle lets Mia know, Robin, remember when Wendy's mom said something to you on her social media? And you know, just Mia's like, oh, I actually forgot about that. So again, y'all trying to manufacture something and make something be something that it's really not. And that's what it is. Um Wendy pulls it up on her phone. She reads it off. And yes, her mom may have put some church holiness into the read, but it was not witchcraft. Like, again, it was a reach. Just uh, Wendy says her sister Ivy and her and her cousin-in-law, Levy, are no longer friends. And that's where the issues come from, which I 100% agree. 
that's where the issues come from. I wish they would get them two women in the room with NECA, with Wendy, and y'all just talk about the shit so we can wrap this shit up. Because I, I cannot go further on this season with this same tirade because it's going to get on my damn nerves. The neck gets to clapping and saying, nice try. It was, it was not about them being friends or no longer being friends. And I'm like, girl, you, between you and Wendy, both with the theatrics. And again, I tell people all day, I never liked Wendy when she first started because I felt she did too much. And she's giving you too much now. Neneka, you're doing too much too. So it's at this point, I don't give a damn either one of you got the hell off the show because y'all both do too much at certain times. But Wendy needs to learn how to control your emotions. You've been on reality TV too long right now to be letting new um, new tricks on the block uh, get, get you all up in your chest and squashed in your chest. No, I would be sitting there team unbothered, for real. I would have addressed you a few times, but after a while, I would have stopped addressing you. Because after a while, can't, that's what Candy did to Courtney. She stopped addressing her and acting like Courtney was even in the damn room. That's all you got to do. Um, Naneka says the issue is Wendy says she was using her name to get in the room in cer certain social circles with people and she's a clout chaser. Well, they said allegedly the same shit about Wendy. When Wendy claimed she knew Karen, when she got introduced on the show. I mean, I'm just saying. Um, now Naneka is making it seem like Wendy didn't want her to come on the show. And, and then I saw this post that Naneka put up claiming that Real Housewives of Potomac producers knew her for two years. So if they knew you for two years, baby, we on season eight. So that means they knew you at season six and you still were not on the show. So clearly you weren't that damn memorable. That's why you didn't get cast in way back when. And now you're here now, and we still don't want you on the screen. We still are not connecting with you because you came in too hot. So there's that. Um, and and then you know you got Ashley talking about well maybe she only want to be the only Nigerian, and I'm just like girl, you and your forehead, please get the hell out of the screen. Um, and it's just it's stupid at this point in time. Again, it just seems like a battery was put in the neck of back and was told, hey, if you come in hot with this storyline, because I'm, you know, not getting along over here with this person. And that's what it just feels like. It just feels like battery in the back type shit. And I'm just over it. Um, I'm just like. All this and then she say, you know, it's just all this back and forth. Now, then at the end where production got Wendy was. They saw Lebe was at the sympathy. Now, Wendy, I don't know what it is if you have a relationship with this lady, if you don't have a relationship. And again, and I'm going to say this, when family members have other family members that fall out with certain people and they were friends of maybe that family member more necessarily than you, you're still going to ride with your old family member 100%. So I can see that being the reason. But at the same time, I'm still... Side eye and Wendy, because clearly y'all do in some way, shape, or form know each other. You may not know Naneka directly, but you do know the cut in law. Some in some way. Okay. And the cousin in law could have brought Naneka around to an event and they passed each other and you still didn't really know each other. Or maybe y'all was introduced, but it never jumped off. In either event, I feel like both sides of the coin is lying. And at this point, who gives a shit anyway? Because at this point, it's just stupid. Can we get to something that we actually like and to some fun? And can this group stop holding on to the bullshit? Because I'm going to tell you what the real problem is with Real Housewives of Potomac. It's in the same stage that Real Housewives of Atlanta is. And the sad part, again, is that it is not has not been on TV as long as Atlanta to be doing this. I'm going to tell you, Eric Fuller, what you need to do. Just like you sitting over there putting this, putting Real Housewives of Atlanta on pause, you need to put Potomac on pause, and y'all need to refigure this out. Matter of fact, they need to let Truly Productions go from off of Real Housewives of Atlanta and off Real Housewives of Potomac and let Prevera's of Pop come in and refresh the show. Because Prevera's of Pop did an amazing job with refreshing Real Housewives of Miami. 
and I'm be honest with y'all, I am more into Miami and Beverly Hills. Even Beverly Hills is giving more than this shit is over here. And I know a lot of y'all don't watch Re uh, uh, Miami or Beverly Hills, but I strongly suggest y'all to get into something else besides watching the same thing. Because I, what I'm going to tell you is this, is that what's starting to get cringeworthy for me is that it seems like these all black casted shows seem to start getting in these same ruts. Whereas the other shows that are not all black casted and it's a mixed cast are not getting into these same colorism, racism, all these isms, things going on on the cast. It's not rinse and repeat over there. And it is over here. Um, and again, I saw a lot of content creators says they tapping out of it because it's too triggering. The show is too triggering. It's not worth it. And it's, and, and, and they, it's boring. Just keep it a buck. It's boring. Married to Medicine is giving more than this show is giving. And I can't see this is why I'm not doing these videos any doing live lives on them anymore because it's not no point. It's really not no point. I can't give no energy to a show that's really not giving us much to talk about to begin with. So it'll be pre-records for them on from this day on out, unless something happens that actually I want to talk about. But other than that, y'all get these pre-records. Um, <laughs> thank y'all for watching. I really ain't got no more. I can't believe I stretched it out over 50 something minutes because I didn't think that I could. Um, but you know, this is my opinion on Real Housewives of Potomac. I'm just I'm tired of the arguing and complaining. Can we get to the light shade? Can we get to some fun? Can we get to some something else that's not the same beefs? That's all I'm asking. Can we move on? Can we be grown and move on? But I guess we can. So since we can't move on, I'm gonna move on for them. <laughs> but that was my <laughs> video and my review on Real Housewives Potomac. Make sure y'all, um, you know, come back, see me again. Make sure y'all like the video, comment, um, push the video around the algorithm. You know, do y'all thing. You know what I'm saying? I love y'all. Thank you for watching uh, with me today. And go ahead and check this trailer on the way out. The Chef Don Don Productions presents School of a Love Honey. A new LGBTQ web reality series in the big city of Dallas, Texas. If you are interested in dating school boy, make sure you get those applications in right now just in time for school to be in session.